So we've got Bluetooth Low Energy Module here, and we're connecting it to an iPhone 5C, which is running a code base that is in C++. Now, we're going to explain this in a few different parts. First part is we're just going to show that it actually works, turn on an LED through the iPhone 5C. Then we're going to look at the Arduino code, which is very simple. Then we'll look at the C++ code. And actually, right after this, we'll explain what exactly Bluetooth Low Energy is and how it compares to the um, normal Bluetooth, but we'll get into all the code fairly quickly. So, on the iPhone, we hit connect it. Or connect. We've got a very simple thing, four buttons. Connect, light on, light off, and this button over here is disconnect. So we just go on, off, on, off. Then we'll leave the light on and we'll hit disconnect. Then we'll bring over an iPad running the same code, so we connect. I'll bring the iPad out of the way, and you can see that it can turn the light on and off. We'll disconnect. And then we'll go up to this, which is a um, Mac desktop, and we will do the same thing. We'll connect, and we can turn the LED on and off. And disconnect. So, very straightforward. So now we'll skip out of Xcode, we'll go over to the um, we'll go over to the Arduino. Just push the Arduino over here so it's, it's kind of off to the edge. We'll close this. Go make sure we're connected to the proper serial port. And then we'll hit so now we're properly connected. So now when we run this code, and you can see that, we connect. When we hit um, light on, we get hello, we so back and forth. And then when we go in here and we send gobbledygook back up, you can see that it's appearing here. So we'll send There we go. So that's pretty straightforward. So there we go. But now, what exactly is Bluetooth Low Energy? Now, the sort of normal modules that we have, we have an HCO5 here, or this is an HCO6, an HC, oh, this is Bluetooth Low Energy, this is an HCO5, this one's an HCO6, and these are traditional Bluetooth modules. They work in a nice, normal, sort of Bluetoothy way. You go into your settings, you go to Bluetooth, You'll see these, you pair them, they've got a default pair code of 1, 2, 3, 4, that kind of stuff. It's all all pretty sort of traditional old school Bluetooth. Now these guys, they, I don't know if you'd want to call them Bluetooth high energy, but they do definitely use a lot more um, energy than this guy down here. And this is a Bluetooth low energy module here. And they don't announce themselves. So when you go into your Bluetooth configuration and you've got one of these guys powered up, he won't show up. He's just not there. He's a ghost. You have to connect to him using some kind of Bluetooth low energy um, API. And you have to pull him. You have to say who, who's out there. And then you can I, grab onto one of them. And then you say, what can you do? As you can see, there's lots of pins on these guys. Um, here's handful of the raw modules and um, they've got a lot of pins and we've only when we're connected like this we only have a f basically really two of the pins are connected I mean, it's the power pin and whatnot but there's just RX and TX are connected and that's all we're using it for in this entire experiment is as a serial pipe but there's actually SPI there's a bunch of G IO pins, GPIO kind of pins, so you can actually control a bunch of stuff. You could control motors and all kinds of stuff with this if you used it in the raw, but we're not going to do that today. And these are actually pretty cool. So, we have this. I'm going to unplug this because that light's bright. Um, so we've got this module here, and it's plugged in. Now, this one identifies itself, so we can now see in this code as... Um, down here, it's identifying itself as CC41-A. Now I've got another Bluetooth module that, with an AT command. It's AT plus name, and then you put the name. I've renamed this one to Donovan. So we'll plug that in, and then we'll put the LED back on. 
So we're running the um, this, so we'll connect, and you'll see it's not connecting. So we're going to change this to Donovan. Now, an alternative way is you could bring up a list of um, modules and that are available and try and pick one to connect, but if you're building this for some kind of robot or something, you know what your module's name is, and you're going to um, try connecting to it by name, and that's it. Now, you can also use a UUID, so we'll turn off that bright LED on off. And this one's the Donovan module. And so it's different than this CC2541-A, which is the default name. And um, it's pretty straightforward. The um, You can call them by name, or you can call them by UUID, which is probably a bit more, well, unique. Seeing that unique is in the word of, um, is in one of the U's unique device identifier. And a universal unique ID, I think it is, UUID. Anyway, it's... Um, so I'm just calling them by name, not necessarily the best way to do it, but um, it makes it very easy for this program, and this is all stuff you can change. So it's pretty straightforward. There's just two files that you need to be concerned about. These two are my C++ and Objective-C, because the Objective-C is all packed into the C++ file, and the header has no Objective-C. I've even used, in the case of where I'm pointing to the Objective-C, very uh, class. Um, I use a void pointer, so I don't have to have any Objective C in the header, and then there's no Objective C potentially in your program. But to talk to Bluetooth, it's an Objective C API. So here we have. Um, I won't go into all the details, but it's pretty straightforward. I've got each of the functions here in the rough order that they run. And so what you're basically doing is you turn the device on um, here. And then um, it very quickly will say whether there's a capability to turn on and off because you can actually deactivate your Bluetooth and then that would give you an error. And then it begins scanning. You cannot scan on an iPhone until you have sort of established this update state or, or this initial state. You can on the desktop. This is one of the sort of little weird things. You could run this line up here on the desktop and it would work, but it won't work up there on the iPhone. And then it just goes through, it starts asking, who are you, what are you, and so on and so forth. It'll see, it'll be looking for the Donovan one or the named CC one. We won't go into that code. You can look through it yourself. Then we find the services, and then right here is the critical service, this FFE1. I could have compared this in hex, but I just like to do it in text. And so we look at the FFE1 service. That is the basically the serial UX. Or RX and TX. It's the only service offered by these default um, firmwares. And it's the only one wired in anyway. And then down here, if data comes in, we do listen to that. And also here was where we send it out. Now I'm processing strings. You could alter this so that it's hex going in and out because that's what it actually wants. I turn the strings into data and then feed it out and the data back into strings and bring it back in. But Hex is probably the more efficient way to do it. And then down here we have the um, definitions of the various, or the um, details of the various C++ functions that are found in the C++ library that is all you'll ever be calling. So your C++ code will ever only talk to C++ code. And it's pretty straightforward. You give it a name. This is where the CC2541-A or Donovan or whatever you've named your module. We connect, we disconnect. Um, this is a delegate function. You don't actually set the status or data arrive at yourself. This is all coming in from callbacks that are going back and forth between the Objective-C and here. And then here is where you set your callbacks. And this is where it's going to send data and status updates. And very, very straightforward. Inside my main code, we won't go into the Cocos2DX too much. It's a very straightforward thing. You init your screen, and then I have touch callbacks. And then here's the data callbacks that are coming in from my Bluetooth thing. So it's pretty straightforward. We set up the buttons, we set up listeners for the buttons, and then down here we set up the two callbacks. BLE is a um, instantiation of the 
BLE COM class. And then down here, when you touch connect, it connects and tries, in this case, to Donovan. So if we go back to what it was before, CC41, I think that's actually, yeah. Yeah, that's what the default is. It's a CC2541 is what it's called, but this is CC41 is what they um, set by default. It's the chip that's the CC2541. And um, then I send a hello and a goodbye for light on, light off. Very straightforward. The Arduino code, it's the same sort of thing. It um, It's bringing this data in, turning the light on, turning the light off based on that, and that's it. It's all very straightforward. It's a very simple thing. I um, have not even begun to scratch the surface of what BLE can do. It's a very, very nice improvement, I think, over the sort of old-school Bluetooth. Um, there's use cases for both of them, but I find for robotic-y type things, um, I like to connect this. For instance, I've got drones that I'm working on where I'm putting Bluetooth in them. I've got a security system that you can talk to through your phone, so that's nice to have. And with the BLE, you can set up things like iBeacons, where you can create notifications on your phone when you come within range of a one of these BLE devices. It's it's actually quite a cool little system. Anyway, um, very, very simple code, very simple wiring. I apologize for not just making this wiring a little simpler with a MOSFET. I used an APA 104, which is this very bright LED. It can do 16 million colors, although we're not using the color data import. We're just leaving it at the last color it was set to, which means I need a MOSFET, because this thing can't be powered off a pin. It would burn the pin out. Pins have a limit of about 40 milliamps, so I just powered it through the MOSFET here. Not necessary. We could have used a nice LED and just a resistor straight off the pin. That would have worked. Ignore these guys here, they're not part of the circuit. And um, I've got a fritzing diagram for this. And But one nice thing about using this MOSFET particular um, sort of design is this uh, Bluetooth could have just as easily been powering a fairly powerful motor. This MOSFET can handle, I don't know, 30 volts, something like 60 amps or something, with enough heat sinking, so. Um, Quite a bit of power could be controlled through this tiny little low energy Bluetooth. And when it says low energy, they mean low energy. You can power these off a coin cell. If anything, the Arduino might be more of a um, power pig than the little Arduino would be. Or little Bluetooth, sorry. Whereas these guys aren't. The HC05 and HC06, they're not so bad themselves, but I don't think a coin cell would really keep this going for very long. Certainly not just listening. So, if you have any questions, um, just feel free to ask. You can contact me through GitHub, through the YouTube comments are probably best. Other people can then see your questions. I usually respond fairly quickly. And uh, I just finished up a large contract, and I'm about to... Um, I don't know what I'm going to do next. Anyway, it's... Um, so I've got a bit of free time. I might make a few more videos before I jump into something new. Anyway, if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. And, of course, it's helpful if you do all that voting up and subscribing and liking and all that stuff. And stars and GitHub, I really like those. Anyway, thank you very much, and um, have a good day.